to continue the adoption of the policies that we have had in place so moved until this point. And second. a second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you very much. Now we can do the shuffle. Okay. okay. What is the shuffle? Yeah, everybody has to move to where they're supposed to be. I think you stay. I get to stay. Yeah. You get to stay there. there. A new person. And Leslie, Leslie here. comes here. Leslie goes that way. And I am there. How do people know this shuffle? Hey. Just Tradition. Tradition. Peg. Peg is the only one that I knew. Is Peg a real person? She is a real person. She's here. The secretary goes there. Why do we have to do this? I don't see her. goes there. I would like to have you next to me. Me too. And I like Laura too, but I don't know who It's so we get to sit next to different people every year. But I sat next to her for a year. We already know each other so well. The disadvantage of, you know. Hi. Hello. Oh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Hello, Mr. Bo. Oh, well, we're supposed to adjourn the other meeting. Do we adjourn the other meeting? Oh, yes. I'd like to um, take a motion to adjourn <laughs> the uh, adjourn. organizational meeting. Okay. Uh, let, uh, okay. I'll I'll second. I motion. Yes. Yeah. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Sit down. Aye. Aye. Wait Aye. A second. All right, now it's call to order. Thank you. And, uh, 7.40. Welcome, everybody. Okay. All right, first order of business will be the superintendent's report. Okay. Thanks, John. Uh, a number of uh, things to report on. The first is uh, the senior activities. <laughs> I received this information uh, from Mike Harvey. Uh, the junior, senior, senior junior prom uh, is May 9th. Uh, Lillian Blacker Awards are May 21st. I think I gave a handout to the school committee this evening for the Lillian Blacker Awards. That's the uh, based on the senior theses, uh, the award-winning papers. They read excerpts and then talk about their research. It's always a really great evening, so um, I really encourage any members of the committee that have an opportunity to come to that. I believe it's a Wednesday evening. Uh, it's uh, usually well attended by students. A lot of juniors uh, attend that usually, thinking about doing the senior thesis the next year. So uh, please come to that um, if you get a chance. The senior exams are May 23rd through May 29th. Uh, we have graduation rehearsal uh, then the next week. Uh, June 3rd is Senior Service Day. Uh, seniors report to the cafeteria for breakfast and receive their assignments for the day. They bring a bag lunch and report back to the high school cafeteria at the end of the day for pizza. Uh, June 3rd is also the Palm Senior Music Banquet that evening, 6 p.m. 
June 4th, the next day is a senior cruise. Uh, and June 6th, our senior awards, that's held in the uh, auditorium, and then uh, graduation on June 8th. So it's a very full schedule for seniors. And uh, I met with seniors today, um, a subset of seniors, and uh, they're very excited about the end of the year, and very, very busy, and things have not lessened dramatically from all the other things that they've been doing all year, even though they are things now with their senior pieces. We also had the uh, Memorial Day exercises on Friday, May 23rd. We start off with a program at Belmont High. There's a continental breakfast there for the, uh, the veterans and uh, the teachers and students that are part of this. Then we move to the Wellington, then to the Winbrook, and then there's a luncheon at the DFW at uh, about 11.30. Okay. Uh, Latin trip proposal uh, for April 2009. Uh, these all come actually to the superintendent. The superintendent can approve these, but I included in the packet for the school committee. Uh, this is uh, for uh, <laughs> going to Rome. Uh, it will be a, uh, uh, from April 17th to April 27th, so it's actually 11 days. Uh, they're visiting uh, in situ Roman buildings, ruins, and art. Uh, visit Etruscan and Greek sites uh, in Rome. I think they're also going down to uh, Pompeii for part of the visit. They go on the catacombs as well. So it sounds like a terrific visit uh, for the students. And, uh, okay, Jenny remembers that. Yeah, great. How many years of Latin do the kids have to have before they go? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. How many years of Latin do the students have? He did tell me they were all Usually Latin three. students. And I think a number of four. them are AP students yeah, as well. Could be four. Yeah. So it should really be, I mean, you know, they should be able to appreciate it, yeah. which I think would really be fun. We have a number of student awards that I'd ask Pat to read. Just, uh, I, I think we might have already announced the, uh, the National Merit uh, Scholars, but just to remind us that Be Belmont High School is pleased to announce that there were eight. Award. And then lastly, uh, Mr. Harvey also received word that Angie Tang from Belmont High School has been selected as the winner of the 2007-2008 uh, Siemens Award for Advanced Placement, and she will receive a $2,000 scholarship. And she was selected for this award based on her exceptional performance on AP exams in both math and science. So congratulations to her for her fine performance, and congratulations to all our, our semifinalists. Great. Thank you, Pat. Uh, the Globe Northwest on Sunday had an article uh, entitled Following the Money. They did this for each region of the, uh, of the greater Boston area and uh, talks about the average uh, family income in Belmont. It's $117,000, $117,300. One of the things they pointed out was that uh, there are some districts that have grown faster than others in terms of uh, income growth and uh, from 2001 to 2005. That's the time frame they're, they're looking at. And interestingly enough, of the uh, 24 or 28 communities that they include in the Northwest region, that's what the Boston Globe includes. This information, by the way, is taken from the Internal Revenue data by zip code. Uh, Belmont had the highest increase in salary, 43.3%, uh, uh, which was interesting to me. I mean, I, uh, it's because it's not the highest average income. Uh, family income that was uh, in our region was conquered at 221, and then Lexington was uh, about 159. Harvard was about 169. Uh, Winchester 156, and so on. So it'd be interesting to see what, how you might interpret that. I mean, one of the ways I think about it is that perhaps uh, some families that were on fixed income have moved out. Other families uh, with uh, uh, with larger incomes have moved in. But I'm not sure if that's the interpretation or not. That's average income. Average income, that's right, not, not medium. It was also interesting, they totally conflated 02478 with Belmont Hill. Yeah. I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not like realizing not that 02478 is the only zip code mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yes. in Belmont. Right. That it, you know, that's so right. It was interesting to right. read their commentary because they so clearly associated this rise, you know, Right, with Belmont Hill, yeah. I saw that. The other, uh, Lexington does have two uh, uh, area codes, um, zip codes, uh, um, 02420 and 02421, and uh, Bedford does too, I noticed uh, in there. So interesting uh, information. Uh, the other thing that appeared in the, ball, in the uh, Wall Street Journal on uh, Monday had to do with kindergarten. German tots learn to answer the call of nature. Kindergarten moves into the woods. What about ticks? Um, so in Idstein, in Idstein, Germany, <laughs> <laughs> e 
Each weekday in Idstein, Germany, come rain or shine, a group of children walk into the forest outside Frankfurt to sing songs, build fires, and roll in the mud. Um, the, uh, to relax, they kick back in a giant sofa made of tree stumps and twigs. And they talk about the kids, it's called the Wald Kindergarten, which is forest kindergarten. The kids go out into the woods, and it's like a return to nature, and if they have to go to the bathroom, they sort of tootle off behind a tree, I guess. They, they sort of talk about this. It's also sort of interesting that, um, that they're doing this, and then they talk about the parents picking them up, and they're covered head to toe in mud which uh, must be a lot of fun, and they got a little yeah. picture of him here as well. So anyway, a little humorous, uh, little humorous uh, comment on full day kindergarten. So is that so what we're going for? <laughs> we are not going for that, no. It's, uh, but I felt, I, I felt constrained to mention it, just, just for the fun effect of it. Uh, we're doing two searches right now. Uh, they are, we've started and posted them and advertised them, and we'll continue uh, to the searches, we'll probably do the interviewing in early uh, May, a search for the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction, and a search for the Director of Technology. As everyone knows, uh, Lee McC uh, McCann is uh, resigning effective June 30th, moving to the Western Public Schools uh, and serving in that role there. Uh, we will certainly miss him, uh, and uh, so we'll do a search for that as well. We're posting that, and I'll keep you updated on, on both of those searches, uh, as a matter of fact. And the last thing is, Pat passed out tonight something that arrived too late for us to put in the packet, and that's the Belmont High School uh, handbook. And the handbook uh, has some uh, information on some things that have changed. The changes, uh, I think, are noted um, in the uh, margins. And, and actually, that's all you are receiving are the pages on which the changes have been made. Everything else is, is in place. It's the same. Right? And there, is, uh, there was one concern that Mr. Harvey had, and uh, we've straightened that out. Um, thanks to Dr. Missel, and those were the activity fees that you'll see on page 22 of this document. Uh, they needed to be clarified because, uh, first of all, this is the first time <coughs> we've ever had a distinction between an athletic fee and an activity fee, and uh, that so that information will be clarified to um, reflect the most recent votes of the school committee regarding the athletic fee and the uh, activity fee for students. Okay, great, and that's everything, uh, John. So what will we do with this? Uh, hold on to it. Yeah, it's, it's for your information. If you do have questions after you've had a chance to peruse it, we'll be glad to invite Mr. Harvey to a school committee meeting. So we'll be voting on this in the future? I don't, yeah. I, I don't believe well, there's a vote anymore. Oh, is that right? No? Okay. okay. We used to, because we used to send them to the, all the, all the, um, okay. all to the state, but we'll double check. We can double check. We have new council, so we'll see uh, what new council has to say on this. Okay. That's everything. Okay. Thank you. Next item is the, um, Enroll. Chair, chair, chair report. Uh, many of you in this room were at the, the auction, the annual fundraiser for the Foundation for Belmont Education. It was in, uh, a record turnout. I'm not sure the number of that, but also a record uh, gross income of $122,000. I think last year was in the, around 90 or so. I think so. So that's a special thanks to the organizers, the lead organizers, Heidi Sawyer, Carolyn Boyle, and Ginny Dyroloff. Who, uh, and then the dozens of people mm -hmm. working with them, and Neil Fay, the auctioneer. Um, you know what I would say about the, the foundation reception and dinner is it's not only a fundraiser, and it certainly is that. It also is just a great time. It's a, it's really is a friend raiser where you meet a lot of people, and some people you don't see on a regular basis, and some people that you do see on a regular basis. But it's really good, and everybody is. Uh, uh, it's a, a very festive mood. Uh, teachers were there demonstrating smart boards. It was really a, a lovely evening, and I give all the credit in the world to the foundation, John Wong, Lynn Palkari, uh, Ginny, uh, Carolyn, uh, um, Heidi, uh, for all the work they did. It was just a tremendous evening. So the format changed. It was not a, as formal a sit-down dinner, and I think that worked better. There's more chance for mingling. And, and the auction was very successful, more successful than I can ever remember. Did you win anything? I did not win anything, John, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm used to that. Okay. <laughs> also, the, the video done by Tom Kokum will be available probably on a, a longer version on a CD, a DVD, and a, the shorter version will be available, I think, on the Foundation website soon when they can figure out how to do that. Uh, let's see. Another item. Town meeting starts uh, two weeks from yesterday, April 28th. should go for two or three evenings, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday. Um, is all of us town meeting members? Most of us are. Uh, next week is school vacation week. Uh, I'm 
Yes. How much you're looking forward to that? And MASC Day on the Hill is between the two town meeting dates. And it'll be April 29th. Um, probably half of us have said we're going to go to that. And finally, a special thanks to our retired, now retired selectman Paul Solomon, who just wrapped up six years on the board. Um, he's been a friend of the schools and a friend to me. Uh, one thing I remember him chiding me, saying, "Make sure you're home for dinner, <laughs> just to you know, don't get too wrapped up in you know your job, job, and this job, but to, to you know remember that that is very important and make it one of the top things on your list." So I. It's great advice. He scolded me, and, and his, it was very good advice. Okay. <clears throat> and what else? That's it for the chair report. Next item is citizens' concerns. If there's any citizens' concerns to uh, bring to our attention, we won't necessarily address them, but you could address them to us. And I see a hand. Um, Dr. Alper. Thank you. I appreciate the time, Mr. Chairman. We'll try to yep. make it brief here. This is my daughter, Megan Alpert, who's a Hello, fourth Megan. grader at the Wellington. And the reason that I'm here is I kind of have sort of the unfortunate task of speaking for my wife, who unfortunately was not able to be here tonight. Uh, as you and Ms. Graham knows, my wife had a, presented a concern, which I would like the rest of the uh, committee to know, about the uh, methodology behind replacing a teacher, specifically for Megan in the fourth grade, Wellington. I'd like to start by saying that the end result has worked out well, that there is a replacement in place. Um, the teacher that Megan currently has is pregnant, and she's leaving on Friday for her maternity leave. And the teacher was brought in today and introduced to the children. Uh, there lies the problem, is that while the children and the parents were initially led to believe that there would be a nice long interaction and grace period and introduction, uh, in fact, this happened today. And people were scrambling, people were concerned, the children were anxious. I actually brought Megan here because I think that since she was inside, I think she can speak better than I can for what happened. My wife's concern, uh, my concern, I think other parents' concern is really, again, the method and the lack of communication that this teacher informed the school and the parents and the kids that she was pregnant in October. And most of us know, of course, how long that everybody gives us to work through. And there was plenty of time to work with it. And taking into account that it is difficult, I'm sure, to find a teacher to pick up in midstream, uh, six months should have allowed time to hopefully find someone and have a nice, casual introduction, overlap, etc. cetera. Uh, and this just did not happen, calling a lot of angst on the part of the kids and the teachers. Why don't you tell them? What happened? Um, they said that in two weeks we would find out who the new teacher was and she would come in so we would all get to know her. But it happened today. Most of us kids know her, but some do not because she's one of the reading teachers and helps kids write and read. And at recess, all the kids were talking about it for two weeks, waiting for everybody to find out who the new sub was. And everybody was very anxious, but today we found out and we were all happy, but we were all very upset that we did not find out sooner because we waited this long, and some of us know her, but not that well. Okay, thank you, Megan. I have no idea where she gets her speaking ability from. <laughs> um, but that's really, you know, it's in a nutshell. I mean, as I said, on the one hand, you could look at the end result that this is someone that is known to the kids, and those that have worked with her apparently like her very much. Seems very personable. I guess she's got quite a few years teaching experience. And hopefully it'll be a little easier transition because she is known to it. But everybody was kept in the dark. And it just really went on too long. And so I guess what I'm here to ask is, we're certainly not looking for heads to roll and blood to flow through the halls of the Wellington, but maybe a chat just to kind of say, you know, it's all about community. And if we can just simply kind of put it out a little more forward, maybe everybody will just take this type of difficult transition. You know, it's hard on kids. I mean, it's one of the reasons I wanted to bring Megan tonight. This probably wouldn't be a big deal to a 10th or 11th grader. I mean, they'll just diss any teacher in front of them anyway, probably. Uh, fourth grade is really, you know, and I think we forget, they form a bond and a relationship with their teachers, and we want them to. And I'm sure that Miss Westfold leaving is a little tough on some of the kids. Uh, I think a more gradual, involved transition might have just worked better. So, uh, as I said, I know that she spoke to you, John, and, 
into you, Lori, and it's not that she ignored the others. I think she didn't want to call all, all six. Um, so we just wanted to put that forward. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Megan. Thank you, thanks, thanks, Megan. All right, any other concerns? Seeing none, first order of major business would be uh, discussion of the school committee comprehensive plan or exit planning. Welcome back, Jenny. Come on down. Come on up. <laughs> Good night, then. Thank you for having me this evening. Um, I set out quite a lot of paper. I don't know if any of you had a chance to read any of it. I didn't bring copies of everything, but I did bring extra copies of the cover memo if anyone wants one of those and hasn't had a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that. Um, I'm coming because the planning board is finally having a chance to start a process of developing a comprehensive plan for Belmont. Um, we expect to need funding for this, but we think that, and I know this budget process has been very difficult for everyone, but we think that funding for this is actually going to come through. We hope um, it's still maybe under some discussion. I believe that it's got the support of the Board of Selectmen, and I think it's going to happen. So we are starting the process. Um, this is the 50,000. Does anybody else need copies? I have extra copies here. Mm -hmm. oh, you're, you're fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to, we're, we're dividing up and coming out to about, I don't know, 10 or 12 boards, um, just to start the process of thinking about the scope. In order to start this, we have to put out an RFP for consulting services, because we need a consultant to help us run the process. Um, and so we want to reach out uh, to other boards this spring to have conversations about A, what this process is, because we really are going to need a lot of help doing it. Um, this is not something that one board does, it's something that the whole town does. And we're starting with boards and committees because we are the people who have the most focus, perhaps, on what the priorities of the town might be, and we thought that that would be the best place to start to discuss the scope, what we, in fact, ought to include in order to make this a Belmont-centered plan, not just a sort of general generic plan under the um, enabling legislation. <coughs> not enabling just the legislation that describes it. Um, and um, that being said, coming to the school committee is a little bit different from coming to the other boards because the school committee has its own strategic plan, its own strategic planning process. And in fact, this is more like a town strategic plan than anything else. Um, it's town-wide. It will encompass uh, land use and development um, guidance, if you will, for the next years. It should take into account what the priorities of the town are, both for land use, for open space, for housing, for uh, economic development, for um, environmental issues, all kinds of things, the kinds of things that were included in the uh, documents that I sent you, which are just for background. I mean, the, the planning board wanted to put together a few pages just to sort of give people an idea of the kinds of things we're thinking about, but they're supposed to be the basis for conversation, not the end of the conversation. Um, Anyway, coming to the school committee, as I said, is, is a little bit different from other boards because we want to know what the school's priorities are, but we have to think about this from the point of view of the town <laughs> rather than an internal school committee point of view on the schools and you know the curriculum and, and the kinds of things that the school committee typically looks at. What we want to do is focus, if we can, with the school committee a little bit on how the schools fit into the town, what the priorities of the town ought to be with regard to the schools, how the town should be looking at the schools and the future of the schools, what the schools are going to need, um, how can we make the schools better, but not getting into the internal workings of the curriculum and instruction, because that really isn't part of this plan. Um, it's a separate, separate piece. So that being said, I just want to sort of go over this memo quickly with you, just so you have a sense of what I've been talking about here. Um, as I said in here, the last time a comprehensive plan was adopted for Belmont was in the 1960s, which is a very long time ago. Um, in the meantime, the zoning bylaws have been recodified, I think more than once, but the most recent time was in 1988, which is, in itself is a long time ago. Since then, there have been about 120 or 130 uh, amendments to the zoning bylaws. The zoning bylaws themselves need to be 
revisited and that will happen we hope but after this process because we want to have this process go forward so that we have a sense of the direction that we're heading in um, there are extreme fiscal constraints in the town as you know there are some developments which have been proposed some that are underway and um, there's a lot of discussion of uh, open space needs and recreation needs and school needs and all kinds of things that are moving forward um, which will all be expensive and just thinking together about how the town looks now how it feels um, what kinds of changes may come over the next 10 to 20 years and how we want to manage those uh, what will we welcome what will we not welcome what do we have control over what don't we have control over um, how do we fit into the region are there regional um, developments are there regional issues are there opportunities for regional sharing of resources of uh, support for services um, those kinds of things are the kinds of things that we hope we'll be we'll be looking at so you can see from the bottom of this page that those are the kinds of things that um, I've put here as questions and what we're really looking for is what are your thoughts about the priorities concerns issues that arise for the town from the point of view of the schools, but from the point of view of anything, really. I'm welcome to take comments about anything. Um, and what do you think this plan, how, how ought we to be thinking about um, goals in terms of this plan? Uh, issue areas, anything that, that sort of um, occurs to you. Um, the reason we're doing this now, as I said, partly is to, is to reach out and just educate everybody about what this planning process is because this is going to take two years to do and the first year is going to be um, mostly outreach not only to boards and committees but also to the residents of the town in a variety of ways that's really mainly what the consultant will help us with and then the second year we hope will be taking all that input and um, coming to some policy decisions setting some goals and actually writing the plan um, but in order for the plan to make any sense to anyone to have any uh, effect it has to be widely understood, participated in, and um, have some good oversight when we actually get it to move it forward. Um, the plan will consist of a number of things, goals, um, priorities, and so on, but it will also have some suggestions for implementation. And there will be um, assignments to various boards and committees for certain pieces to, to happen. It's, it's very much like the strategic plan for the school department. Um, the planning board will be the body overseeing it, um, sort of riding herd, making sure things are actually happening. Um, and I think it will be adopted by town meeting when we actually get it. Um, that should be part of the process. Um, and so I don't know if you have any questions about what it is or what we're doing. Um, I think this should be more familiar to the school department than anybody else actually in town because we do have the strategic plan. And that's been a process we've been through several times in the school department. So. Um, it's not exactly the same, but I think there are a lot of similarities. So I'm just looking for ideas from you about um, how the schools fit into this and, and how they fit into the town. There is no sheet about the school department, about the public schools, um, among the issue sheets that I gave you. And that's partly because um, I was the one who was supposed to write it. And when I tried to, they all said to me, oh, you know, this is... This is coming from a school committee point of view. This is really not very helpful because um, I was putting out facts about the schools. And um, yet we all agreed at the same time that the schools in Belmont, as you know, are a very high priority for this town. And you can't undertake a strategic plan for the town without taking into account the schools and without considering um, how to fit the schools into the plan. Um, there are certain obvious places in terms of public facilities and buildings. Um, in terms of cultural resources, those are two buckets that the school department sort of obviously fits into. There may be other ways. So I'm talking too much. A lot of this sounds like the Vision 21 mm -hmm. process. It is. What's it, the, how, how do you? The, the Vision 21 process was like this, but this will come out with something which is far more specific and detailed than that. Um, that came out with a one page vision, which is certainly a guide, um, but this is supposed to come out with something much more like the school department strategic plan with you know, a lot of different areas, goals, implementation steps, um, something that's more concrete perhaps than the vision. Um, I, forgive me if I didn't read something I was supposed to read. Uh, you mentioned an issue sheet. I don't yeah. think I've seen any of those, so I don't know that I know the model 
you know, and if I, if I didn't read something I was supposed to read, I apologize. No, to you. that's fine. I just but let me just say, not knowing the model, I have a couple of questions which maybe would be answered if I knew the model. Yeah. Do you envision the school committee being? Do you envision a committee doing this and a member of the school committee or representative of the school community on that? Or do you see the school committee as just someone that your group will come to and interview and get feedback from? I don't know exactly what the process will be yet because we haven't actually worked it out in detail yet. However, my guess is that there will be not just one but a number of different committees. There may be a steering committee. Um, if there is a steering committee, will it be formed from officials on boards already? I'm not sure. There probably will be some representation, but I wouldn't necessarily think it would be the school committee. Um, this is going to be a very broad process. There'll be some surveys, there'll be some focus groups, there'll be some large, you know, hearings, there'll be all kinds of different ways of, of um, doing outreach, I think, into the community. Um, I think that there will be probably more than one visit. I mean, this is just a preliminary visit, really, just to sort of put the idea on the table and, and to get feedback if you have it, but, but we'll be back. The planning board is not going to be able to do this by itself, though. Um, it's, it's clearly going to have to involve a lot of other people. And will there be specific tasks that we want boards and committees to perform? Um, things to be written, you know, suggestions to be looked at and responded to. There may well be that kind of thing going on. But I don't expect that it's going to be a burden for one particular school committee member it's from the point of view of having to serve on a board that will take two years, you know, that doesn't... I wasn't thinking of it so much as a burden as, a, you know, the level of participation that you were envisioning for the community. That, that was sort of the spirit of my question. But, you know, if you haven't figured it out yet, we'll just stay tuned. We haven't figured it out yet, but, but I would expect that we will want to keep people involved and focused on it. Um, you know, to the extent how much the school committee will be involved depends to some extent on how much of an issue the school department is and, and how it's addressed within the scope of the plan. Um, and I don't know the answer to that yet either, so <laughs> that's, that's part of what we're trying to think about. At this point in time, as we take a chance to digest all of this, do you want feedback from us as individual school committee members, or do you want feedback from us as a board? I, mean, I think that's a critical distinction for how we would proceed with this. I actually think we'd be happy to have either or both. I mean, this is very informal at this point. We're just taking feedback and we're just trying to look for suggestions <coughs> before Jay and Jeffrey uh -huh. turn to the writing of the RFP for uh -huh. the consulting services. Um, we want to focus the plan, as I said, to tailor it to Belmont. Yeah. Um, so how we do that and how we think about housing and schools and economic yeah. development and all of those things and how we balance those things, how we put those things on the table for a consultant is what we're looking for. So I would be delighted if you want to have a conversation tonight with me here and give me feedback as a board. I'd also be delighted to hear from any of you individually um, with any suggestions that occur to you. If you want to have further conversation, you know, and bring me back, I'd be happy to do that or I'd be happy to just have you think about it, pass something around, and then email it over to us. It's, it's really quite informal at this point. I'm not, uh, there's no rigid process. We're just looking for suggestions. Larry. Um, speaking not as a school committee member, but as the chair of the Disability Access Commission, yes. I'm hoping that there'll be some action, interaction with that commission. Absolutely. Um, been sort of lagging behind and getting on board with, the, with things when they're half done or half undone. Yeah. So that if if we could, as a commission, um, I mean, I'm speaking as the outgoing chair, but Good. but that if we could have sort of ongoing dialogues about how each of these things sort of would be impacted by ADA of the yeah. buildings and the infrastructure and the recreation department. Yep, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Um, you know, we we are starting with, as I said, 12 or 14 boards, but. We really intend to come to everybody. I mean, we, we will, in the end, involve all the boards in town. Excuse me, because this is town-wide. It's supposed to look at all issues, and that's certainly going to be an area that we'll be visiting. What's your timeline for when you want the RFP issued? We are going to, um, because we expect the funding to start July 1st, um, we expect to release the RFP sometime in mid-June, I believe. And so um, it will be being written starting in mid-May. Um, that's the kind of time frame we're looking at. Well, I, I guess my, my feeling is that 
I'd like to have a better sense of, you know, what the framework is that you're going to be looking for feedback on, you know, in terms of trying to imagine how the schools fit in with this plan. Well, did, hmm. does anybody have these? Here. I have I, I downloaded all of those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That will give you a sort of a Thank start. Yeah. Um, there are more. Um, actually, you can just have all of these. I have more. Email? Yeah. 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 They're all individuals on the planning board, um, so they're all slightly different, but they're just supposed to be giving you a sense of the kinds of things, the kinds of questions we're asking, uh, for the most part. They're done in question form. Um, there's one, I don't know if you, you, you have the one on um, environmental issues um, <laughs> somewhere. Um, there, there are a number of different ways of looking at the structure for this. And these, as I said, each one's slightly <coughs> different, but most of them consist of questions because they're just supposed to be the basis for helping other boards think about this and giving you some structure to sort of focus on. Um, but as I said, what we're really looking for now are, as a board, as individuals, what are your thoughts about what this town's priorities ought to be for its schools? And one of the big ones, obviously, is funding. Um, so I'm happy to, you know, include that. That's sort of obvious. So I, I don't, you know, I'm not even sure we need to say that. Although it's always good to say it because we always need it. Um, Adequate, sustainable, and sufficient funding. Right. Um, and you know how this community is going to continue to pay for its services, including its schools, is one of the very largest questions we're going to have in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, and that, you know, feeds into the whole notion of economic development and will that help and how much and what are our alternatives. This document will not be something that necessarily focuses on services, but it's clear that our, the way we think about the future of the services in the town has a lot to do with the way we think about how we should use the land that we have in the town. and so. To that extent, there's a significant interaction, and so there will be discussion. But I, this this isn't going to be the kind of plan that's going to look in detail at a set of services. Um, it's going to look in, more in detail at um, thinking about the kind of zoning we have. Does that support the kind of direction and goals that we have? Will it support economic development? Will it support um, affordable housing to the extent that we need to? Will it support our schools? How can we as a community come together and shape a community that we like better than what we have now? Or what do we want to preserve about what we have now as we move forward? Those are the kinds of overall umbrella questions that we're looking at. Um, Jenny, where is the funding coming from for the planning process? You said the funding starts July 1st. Yeah, it'll be part of the budget. Uh, Jenny, I, I know you remember this, but uh, a number of years ago we had the financial task force. Bill Skelly kept oh, track yes. of all the meetings. Uh, we <laughs> gave up a, essentially a summer time. We would we travel around the bus and look at the roads, and we met once a week. Two uh, years worth. <laughs> yeah, you know, for you know during the year and then during the summer even. And uh, Bill counted the meetings. I remember we had the '60s or '70s, the number of meetings that we had. It was. Uh, I think it served a purpose and a valuable purpose in the sense of, uh, and there was a small group of people, maybe 10, 15, as I recall. I don't think I've thrown away all the papers from the about that. planning that we did, but um, it, because it helped to focus attention to what this was. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I recollect very well in terms of capital needs was uh, the work, and I, I especially thought it was helpful uh, when Will Brownsworker, as chairman of the Board of Selectmen, uh, pulled together not only all the needs that we had, both operational and capital, but that he also did it in a spreadsheet talking about, yes, we can afford to do this. I mean, I think one of the things that 
that uh, stifles uh, the community sometimes is it looks like it's so expensive that you almost feel like giving up. You know, how are you going to afford the roads? How are we going to afford the sewers and water that we need? And Ralph's pointed out that the, the uh, liability on this, I, I believe, if, if, if I recollect correctly, is something about over $100 million for mm -hmm. replacement of all these pipes that are underground. These are things we don't even see, mm -hmm. uh, sewers and pipes and things like that. And, and, and it seems to me that, that this kind of planning is, is absolutely essential to get some way of thinking about the structural imbalance we now have, but also finding a way to make it happen in, in, in an incremental fashion so that people can feel good about the success that the community has, uh, as well as see that uh, you know we have to take 15 more bites on this before we get it done. And that's, that's really what it's mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. because uh, attacking the structural problems, which have taken a long time to build up, will also take, I, I suspect, a long time to solve. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. And thinking about things like, you know, the high school. Um, I'm intimately familiar with the high school planning because I was the chairman of the group that looked at that um, for, we've done it over a number of years now, but, um, you know, what kind of community asset is the high school? That's the kind of thing I think we need to think about. It's, it's an enormous community asset. It just, you know, a lot of communities didn't build this kind of high school in the 70s when this was built, 60s, late 60s. Um, and, you know, we are very fortunate. And what does it mean to the community to maintain that facility and use it as an asset for many, many years to come? And, and um, how should we plan for that? How should we think about that? That's, that's perhaps relevant to this. Um, you know, the, the placement of the schools, are they in the right place? I mean, if, if we're thinking ahead 20 years, are there any things that occur to the school committee and the school administration that you know that, that we should, as a town, be thinking about for the future of these schools? Um, you know, we're we're pretty pretty small school department in some ways. You know, four elementary schools, one middle school, one high school. Will that change? Will those the needs for those change? Will Will there be a large increase in in uh, enrollment? I don't think we foresee that at this point, but those kinds of questions are the kinds of things we're going to be thinking about, I think. Well, I, I think one of the things that would be interesting to see in this plan is, do you foresee a lot of apartment building going mm -hmm. on in the town? Like, we're talking about the Uplands project. There's a big project that's been proposed in Cushing Square. Will that impact the schools? If so, part of the planning process might be a recommendation that 10 years out we need to build a new elementary school. Yeah. or change the configuration of the middle school or something like that. If, if the plans that you end up proposing for the town will affect the population of the children who are in the, of school age children, it's important to take that into account. Mm -hmm. So the schools that we have don't get completely overloaded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, another way of sort of getting at this maybe to think about um, started to say something about this with the high school, but the interaction of the community with the school department and the school facilities. Um, I don't know if there's anything in the, in the strategic plan that, uh, maybe taking a look through the strategic plan and seeing if there's anything in that that you think it would be helpful to pass on might be another way to, uh, to consider this, this issue. Um, I haven't read the school strategic plan for some years now, so I'm not up to date, I'm afraid. But, but that, that might be um, a good thing to do. There might be some things about that. Yeah, certainly thinking about how we think about housing, whether we think that in this town we need to allow some rise in density as part of either economic development or just, you know, whatever to provide different kinds of housing than what we have now, which is primarily sort of one type, um, one and two family houses is most of our housing stock. Um, how will that change? Does the community want it to change? Those will certainly be some of the things that we're talking about, and that certainly does affect the school uh, census, if you will, and so the facilities that we need. Um, yeah. In terms of the um, timing of this, this is a two-year process, you're mm -hmm. saying, right? Yeah. Which will dovetail nicely, actually, with our next round of a strategic plan. The one we have right now goes through 2010. 
Um, so we'll actually be beginning the process, the process. Great. Uh, with a new superintendent right. um, and uh, can certainly be making sure that we're mm -hmm. thinking about the two things Good. Um, together. That is, that, that's very, um, that's fortunate because <laughs> I think the processes are um, aligned and that would be very helpful, I think, to be going through at the same time with the different perspectives in mind. Um, well, I just want to say it seems like a great project for the planning board and the planning department to be taking on because, you know, planning's good. I think we've learned that lesson in the schools. I think we are able to deliver what we deliver at the cost we do because of the amount of planning that goes into things. So if the town's doing it, I'm all in favor of that. Well, one of the main reasons for doing it that, that I have, I've been advocating for this for a while, and I think that it will be very helpful in allowing there to be a public airing of a lot of the things that are being talked about now because there are a lot of changes sort of on the horizon or even here now that are coming together at once and I think we really do have to think as a community about how this all fits together. I mean Belmont in the past has tended very much to react to things on the basis of the immediate neighborhood, the physical neighborhood of um, a new project, a new town building, a new private building, whatever. Um, and thinking overall about, for, as a town, about what we want, what we want our commercial centers to look like, how dense they should be, should we change any of our zoning zones, you know, are there districts that ought to be larger or smaller or different in some way, do we have the right ones, you know, why is it that most of our properties are non-conforming, <laughs> um, you know, does that make a difference to anyone, um, it, you know, there, there are a lot of questions about the physical space. Um, we are a built-out community, so it's not, we're not looking for, you know, a large section on new developments. Um, however, redevelopment, that's another question. And, and how is that going to occur, if it is going to occur? What is it we'd like the town to look like? What effect will that have on the schools is something that, I mean, it, it could have a large effect on the schools um, if the town changed considerably. Um, how much will it change? I don't know. And, and how long a time frame are we looking out? How, how far is it possible to look out? But, but basically, can we get together and come to some consensus about the direction for the town? Because th there's a lot of pressure for change right now. And I, so I think this is a, a good time to look at this, a, a good um, time to think about these questions. And I welcome any input that the school department has to the process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so. Seems like this would have fit nicely into the, the blue pink group that we had going with the Select and the War Committee and all that. Just, we were looking, looking for so many answers that, yeah. you know, that take a long time to develop. Well, that's right. And those, those groups, and I think many of them came to find that there are a lot of hard questions about regionalization, about, you know, use of facilities one way or another. Um, and I think it does need talking about in a broader context, and that's what we're trying to do here. So, so. I was, in terms of moving forward, I think it's something that we all need to think about first as individuals and then move to having a conversation as a board about how we might do that. Now, whether we do that, we bring Jenny back. We have two more meetings. No, is that what? Three more. Three. Three. Two in June. So we have the 13th. Okay, three more meetings. But it sounds like you're looking for some input for June. We are, but I mean, we'll take. So we've got a meeting on May 13th. That it could become some part of the agenda, or then June 3rd. But is that too late for you to? Nothing will be uh, mm -hmm. sent out by June 3rd. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, if if you have reason to want me back, if you have suggestions that you think we would help if we discuss, then I'd be happy to come back in May or June 3rd, mm -hmm. whichever. If I can, if I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I am. Um, but uh, yeah, or or you know, we can take something written. Um, whatever is the best way to get. Come to you at Bar Harbor. I would <laughs> welcome the visit. Uh -huh. It's a lovely house. <laughs> it's small though. <laughs> so. Bring a tent. Bring a tent. That's right. I get that. so, one question: Has yeah. other peer towns gone through this process recently? <clears throat> there are a lot of towns that have, and we actually have um, some examples from other towns. The one that we really like the best is Wellesley. Um, Wellesley has done this, um, actually, they've done it on an ongoing basis. I don't know when they wrote their first one, but it was some time ago, and they've done, I think, what they think of as an update, um, really, every five years or so. And 
that has really, in their own estimation, kept them moving forward as a community. Like, like the That's what team. we do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's it's been, they found that to be very, very valuable. And, you know, every five years the focus may be slightly different. Things will have occurred, things will have changed, different priorities. But, but we're just starting from scratch here. We haven't done this in so long that we really have got to first write the first draft, if you will, and, and see where it takes us. And then hopefully we'll be able to keep it up and, and keep looking ahead because I think it is a valuable process. So thank you for your time and thank you. Thank you. for thinking thank you. about this. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Appreciate it. <coughs> Next item is school calendar for next school year. Um, uh, Pat uh, presented this, uh, I think, at our last meeting. Uh, and uh, Pat, if there's anything else you need to say about it. I counted uh, the days. Did you? Good. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, one thing I've noticed is there's a long Christmas vacation. There is, that's right. That's worth noting. That's different. Uh, some parents have asked me to personally remind them of that because they said the kids were home a lot longer than they expected them to be two or three years ago when we did it four years ago. So she said, if you ever do that again, remind me. So I'll, I'll try to remember the parents that told me. That. You'll be here. <laughs> I think it's a terrific idea. Is that save us money with heating by having a long break in the middle of the winter? Or not? I don't imagine. Yeah. Okay, so I, need I'll, a, I'll need move the approval yes. of the school right. calendar for 2008-2009. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Well, this will be published in the usual places. It will on be. The, um, the website soon, just so parents can plan. Okay, good. We'll make sure we do that. Uh, we need, need those two curriculum days set first. Before. Right. But they are not? Yeah. No. no. Okay. But they they are accounted for yes, somewhere. Yes, they are. They're just not paid. Okay. So yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll distribute it. We'll tell the uh, principals about it when we meet with them on Thursday this week. So the curriculum days were... Uh, people like having them next to a weekend to see they make a long weekend. If possible. We'll do the best for people appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Next item, speaking of calendars, last the approval of the last day of school for this <coughs> I believe it's uh, June 18th uh, for all students. Okay. Do we really have to approve it? Well, it's usually, it's one of the things that we, I know, it, uh, it does seem uh, very momentous, but uh, it is a thing that we ask the committee to approve just so that it's all set, so people know, and then we uh, ask the principals to put it in the newsletters. Would you like to move approval, Mary? Sure. <laughs> I move that we approve second. Okay, those in favor of June 18th, the last day of school? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? So we, we should sort of drag on time until Bill gets here, is that the story? Uh, well, actually, we've got some uh, no, we got we got fee increases, and then we got transportation. I think that'll take a little bit of time. Fee increases, um, is Jerry going to leave this? Yes, Jerry, yes. Okay, when we uh, developed the budget, which you approved on the public hearing on March 25th, you made some assumptions about the fee increases, but they now need to be voted one by one. And basically, there are three... There's two members, C1 and C2. Um, C1 is basically the uh, student activity, athletic student activity fee, bus fee, and the proposed new full-day kindergarten fee. And then C2 deals with the bus building rental fees, which have not been upgraded for quite a while. Let me take C1 first. Uh, we have been assuming the entire budget deliberations that the student athletic slash student activity fee. At the high school, the athletic portion would be increased from $250 per student. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can we? Uh, Leslie's not here. Maybe we should wait so she hears your whole presentation. Sure. Just for you know, a minute or two. Yeah. 